campaign has started, yes. There is a lot of buzz, and the political parties are talking. 18 of them. One of them will get the mandates to rule this country as a political party and as a candidate. Who will that be? The election is February 25th, 2023. There's a lot that people are talking about. But tonight, let's focus on the Labour Party and the obedient movement, something that caught the political, the Nigerian political space uh, by some storm. I'm being joined tonight by an actor, a lawyer, and a former member of the APC who has since moved to the Labour Party, Dr. Kenneth Okonkwo. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you, viewers at home. You abandoned the APC. What, what was it that was so bad that you had to jump ship? Everything about APC is bad. Really? Yes. Because there is no sound coming out of APC. What you hear is noise. And do you know, when people make noise, they exchange ignorance through argument. I was in APC. And reading their manifesto, reading their constitution, which their leaders are not aware of. They don't know the contents of their manifesto. Because by their manifesto, they talked about restructuring. By their manifesto, they talked about true federalism. And then, the promises they made Nigeria. One naira should be equal to one dollar. Today, a dollar is 735 naira. You In know what it means? Market. Good. Of course, the parallel market is the street market. You know what that means? It means that APC has failed 735% of the time from what they promised. So their deviation is unpardonable. And to begin to rub it in, I did not subscribe to the fact that ASU will be at home, students at home, my younger ones, denied education for seven months, and there is no end in sight. That was not the reason I entered APC. When I entered APC, they promised me they were going to tackle security. After the failure of PDP, give it to PDP. They failed. They acknowledged. They apologized. APC came pretending that they are going to build on what PDP did. And yes, they are building a skyscraper of failure on it. Because the security that was limited to Northeast has metastasized and has swept all over Nigeria. In the Southeast, you talk of the unknown gunmen. In the North Central, you talk about the headsmen. In the Northwest, you talk about bandits, kidnappers, terrorists. In the South South, you talk about the oil thieves. In the Northeast, Boko Haram is still laying ambush, liquidating our military officers and the people in Northeast. So they have not done anything. In the issue of corruption, one person who is supposed to be the custodian of the money of Nigeria is alleged to have stolen 109 billion naira, the provable one. You can imagine in APC government, we are witnessing termites eating documents, monkeys swallowing money, snakes becoming money eaters. In APC government, I did not vote for animals to begin to manifest as witches stealing our money. So in APC government, Everybody has become a thief, including animals. Please, we need the redemption. APC, the name of APC, gives me so much trauma that I would want to talk about APC Are as you... meaning. Mm. Let, me, let me not say it so that you, you, know. you, you, you didn't see all of this before you joined the APC. I joined APC December 16th. December 30th, 2016, when Boko Haram was allegedly technically defeated. When I joined APC, it was actually moving at the right direction. That was just like one year or two after they had finished the 2015 election. And when I read their manifesto, when I read their constitution, these were the lofty aims that I, I saw. The one that really touched me, they said, providing selfless service to the nation that will engender prosperity, stopping discrimination at every level, this, that, this, that. I stayed there till after 2019 election, when the new government came in, and I saw the direction they were going to. If you have been reading my column, 
You discover that I have been in APC, but I have been abhorring everything they have been doing. Well, perhaps for those who will say, uh, those no. who have been following you also, you wanted to be governor in Enugu State. Yes. Perhaps the reason why you didn't get a ticket and uh, maybe the reason why you're speaking like this. These are some of what your critics are saying that that's the reason why you left the APC before, because you couldn't achieve your aim. And perhaps could it also be the reason why you are grieved at the party that you formerly belong? Good. That question is beautiful. Let me first of all admit that I nourished the ambition to be the governor of Enugu State. Whoever is in politics can no longer pretend he's not interested in power. It depends on what you want to do when you get the power. When I was in APC, when they brought the obnoxious fee for people to pay as governors, to become governors, a fee that the president said he cannot afford, a fee that the governor of Kaduna State, Erufai, said he cannot afford, and they want me to use my money that I'm using for my business to go and pay for such a fee, which I have been unilaterally continually building APC in Enugu State. APC was non-existent in Enugu State when I came in. When I wanted to do that, I told people, I said it is to give me the impetus that I should campaign for President Buhari, and they are aware of it. So when they brought that prize, I told them, if you are not going to pay this prize, I am not interested. I raised the secretariat for APC in my local government, single-handedly. I raised it in my word, single-handedly. And when they wanted to do this registration, new members, I still gave them something in the neighborhood of seven figures. So when you talk about money, I believe that I prefer to do the right thing and lose rather than doing the wrong thing and winning. And I got this from P2B in one of the things he's saying later, which explains where I was. If I had that money, and I wouldn't tell you whether I do or not, I wouldn't invest it to buy the ticket of a party where the cumulative salary of the governor does not amount to that in four years. Whoever is in APC who takes that kind of money in the nomination fee is corrupt and cannot make it through the genuine earning of being a governor or being a president. Now so they're saying 100 million, mm -hmm. telling you, that they are increasing in impunity of wrongdoing. Mm. I, I, I will quickly come to the Labour Party and some of the issues, but you touched on a few issues which I'd like you to uh, comment on. The president said he came into power uh, where uh, security was a major problem. And today he said he's done his best to fix the problem of security in this country. If I knew that innocent citizens will be taken away from train, which the president told them it was safe to ride on, and will be in captivity for eight months. You and I know that I would not follow that president. And he's rejoicing, he has done great things. United States of America came to Niger State to pick their citizen that the terrorists put in their camp, United States, mm. and Nigeria took eight months, about eight months, and they are rejoicing after buying those people. You know, in this government, APC's government, they have made people to become slaves because they buy them. The terrorists will kidnap them and they will go and pay ransom. That is buying and selling of human beings. You are meant to rescue people. The terrorists are not meant to release them. And they are negotiating, paying billions of naira to buy back their citizens, not in foreign countries. So you don't agree with what right the president on, said? That what? That is. I'm is, embarrassed is, is that he's rejoicing after people have languished in jail, in, 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 in the terrorist camp for more than eight months, burrowing like animals, and he's rejoicing if, you think that he has done something. The I'm man embarrassed. you're supporting today, you think he has a solution to, to do better than the president of the day has done? Look at his history. First of all, if you would allow me, let me give you the seven-point agenda that he has said he was going to do. That is Peter he's going to be, yes, Peter Obi. Does one. he have a manifesto yet? Oh, thank you for that question. Because I am not going to be sold again to worthless political manifesto. A friend of mine 
He's from Jigawa State. Before now, he has been very reluctant when I'm telling him that there is a need for us to think twice about Nigeria. Then the last time he read what I wrote, he responded positively to it. And I was wondering, what changed? He said, look, let's be realistic. We have issues in this country. I am traveling now from Mecca to Medina, riding on a train that is moving at 300 kilometers per hour. He said, 40 years ago, this was a rural community. But the leaders of this country have put infrastructure and have transformed this city to a mega city. He said, look, that what we need now is not partisan political parties, but that the citizens of Nigeria should come up with a blueprint, not worthless political manifestos. I have been deceived by manifestos before. What I want from the candidates, let them come and sit here and let Shewun Okibaloye ask them questions on what they want to do for Nigeria and let Nigerians cross-examine them. In law, you don't just do examination in chief and go. These people have no manifesto. Atiku, Tinubu, they have no manifesto. What they have is a document written by some brilliant professors, which I can tell you, they do not know the contents of it. Because, let me forget that one. So, this my friend, he said, look, that we have shameless kleptomaniacs governing us. Nigerians, the interest you are better off 40 years ago than they are today. 40 years ago, 85 Kobo is, was equal to $1. 40 years ago, I drive alone. I can drive alone throughout the streets of Nigeria, and nothing will happen to me. 40 years ago, we were exporting refined crude outside. Our problem 40 years ago was not money, but how to spend it. Today, the present government cannot even have revenue enough to service the debts that it ill-advisedly took for himself. Let me tell you about P2B's seven-point agenda. One, securing and uniting Nigeria. Two, effective legal and institutional reforms. Three, production-centered growth for food security. Four, leapfrogging Nigeria out of oil dependency to the fourth industrial revolution. Five, human capital development for effective competitiveness. Six, expanding physical infrastructure through market-driven reforms. Seven, robust foreign policy that will restore Nigerians' strategic relevance in international community. In all these things, they are the things he did and he had done as the governor of Anambra State. Recall, when he was in Anambra State, security was so, insecurity was so removed that the IG of police then Mohammed said within five years of OB regime, no successful bank robbery took place. None is on record. The kidnapper, Evans, ran away from an armed state. And he said OB security tactic chased him away. OB was the first person who started demolishing any home that is owned by kidnappers. And you know what? He said he is going to implement this thing through three level policing, federal, state, and community. He used the community vigilante. He was one of the governors that did it. Obi inherited via Chiu, the first governor of Anambra State PDP. He was the only governor in PDP that was not returned because of his Mala administration. Chiu Kemba didn't do. So um, Gige had a stopgap. And after that, Obi came in. So he inherited terrible Anambra state that was coming last in Wayek through human capital development. Within two years, Anambra state started coming first in Wayek. So can you imagine? We have the APC that inherited foreign currency and they are now coming last in the world. I said they have failed us 735% of the time. Then Obi inherited an educational system that was last and catapulted it to second, to so, so first, yeah. within two, three years. No, 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 I, I, now, I, I, and I'd like to ask you this. So those who will question, uh, because uh, the capacity of Mr. Peter Obi, if you put him on the same pedestal yes. uh, with some of his opponents or some of his fellow contestants, uh,
in the race. For example, um, you look at at least three or four of them that have been former governors of their states. Uh, uh, Robi Musokonkunso was a former governor of Kano State. Bola Tinubu, a former governor of Lagos State. Uh, Peter Obi, a former governor of Anambra State. Uh, Atiku Abubakar was elected but became a vice president uh, eventually. So they, they talk about their profile, their track record when uh, they were governors and those who will say, oh, Peter Obi, that you're talking about under him, uh, you talk about education system in Nigeria, under him there was a, a, a strike and on ending for about 13 months or thereabout. These are question marks that have been raised about the capacity of Mr. Peter Obi. And to think that those who have argued also that, look, a state, governing a state, is a different kettle of fish entirely to handling a very complex Nigeria. Very good. I am going to talk about this, just citing what other people have said. The spokesperson of APC came here and he told you, P2B is better than Atiku. And the reason is because P2B was in a position to take executive uh, decisions and Atiku has never been. So that's settled. When you talk about Tinubu, you just say former governor. He has not held any other post except former governor. Good. He was there for eight years. Peter B was governor for eight years. So when you talk about capacity to be very respectful to these gentlemen, they are men of desperation. They are not men of destination. At 80 years, what can they offer? You cannot force a disunited party on a disunited country to For collapse. those who think that Peter Obi belonged to that same political class of... He was a former PDP. Now he left. I mean, how would you say, how would you define Peter Obi yes. if you say, would you say that Peter Obi is a different, cut from the different cloth? All right. Because he was a former PDP member okay. now, and you've criticized PDP. Very good. I wish you were sitting here and I'm sitting here, and I'll ask you some very tough questions. When he was in PDP, did he, by any means, occupy any executive position for which he took any decision? None. I was in PDP, entered APC, and I'm in level. He was the governor of Anambra State, APGA. He entrenched APGA so much in Anambra State through good governors that even he himself could no longer uproot APGA. You can imagine that level of good governance. That Anambra State became sentimentally attached to APGA because of the foundation of governance that Peter B built. Do you know from the mouth of Atiku Abubakar, you know what he said? Atiku Abubakar said, the reason he told Obasanjo, Chingu Kemba Dinuju will never come back is that school were at home for two years. These are the kind of things will be inherited a completely messed up system. So what you said, if there was any strike, is it anything close to two years? That tells you progression towards the better from the foundation of what he inherited. So you think P2B is better than the, the rest? P2B by three opinion polls. It's not just that it's better, but that he is the only option. So it is wrong to say that P2B is an alternative option. No, he's some the of, only option. Some of your friends in Nollywood yes. don't think so. Yes. They've thrown their weight behind uh, Balatinobu. You just said Nollywood. The APC. You just said Nollywood. I'm not aware. Many of them are politicians. So they are entitled to visit anybody and collect their appearance, appearance fee. I am here talking as a politician, not as a Nollywood practitioner. An actor is entitled to his appearance fee. And if you call him as an actor, you have to pay him. If I was invited as an actor, if I'm not a politician, I would tell you what you will pay as appearance fee. And so let us forget them. When they say they are politicians, you see them here and you ask them questions. Let us know the reason why they are following any candidate. On a final note, and in perhaps 30 seconds if you can deal. Um, for those who have analyzed, because there are a lot of permutations are going on, then what... At best, what Peter Obi will get is to decimate the votes of Atiku Abubakar uh, and his ability to able to penetrate some very stronghold, political stronghold in this country has been questioned. I mean, you've been in politics. 
what gives you the confidence that Peter Obi can have a penetration that can win him the presidency of Nigeria? First of all, Atiku Abubakar, I wonder whether he is still contesting because if he's, a, if he's an honorable man, he would have stepped down. The only manifesto he had coming into this election is that he's a great unifier because that's the one that came out of him. I've told you I'm not interested in worthless political manifestos. What is, it, what is happening in PDP? The entire South has been cut off from PDP. Presidential candidate, North. DG campaign, North. National chairman, North. BOT chairman, North. And when the South cried, you know what they did? They gave them acting BOT chairman. I'm not saying BOT chairman. I said acting BOT chairman. And those people that cried, they were told that they are children that should be sucking their mother's breast and not talking about giving important position in PDP. A great disuniter who has come claiming he's a uniter, the first manifesto, he failed. You've all told me how Peter Obi can get the ticket. I no. mean, can win the election. Yes. With, because we are totally me, out of time. Good. Let me tell you how he has already won the election. All these matches that are going on, on October 1st, they simultaneously went on throughout almost all the Federation. In Lagos, there were five different places. I want to tell you those people marching are votes because nobody told them to come out. And that's the structure they say you don't have. Oh. Is it? I'm asking. Now, NLC, TUC have thrown all their weight behind Pitobi. Is there any local government, any word that you don't have labor present? And they are talking about structure. All right. So what I'm saying is that OB is the only option. Mm. There is no other option. We need to leave it at that. Thank you so much, Dr. Kenneth Okunko, for coming tonight. A lawyer, a actor, and a member of the Labour Party. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Thank I appreciate you. it.